Morning. Merry Christmas. Um, happy Christmas 2019 and into the 2020 season. On this episode, uh, I want to talk about the benefits of top end and low end and why you really, really should learn both because the two are not equal. Now, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, the top end method is plain and simply, most of your strikes are happening up here and they'll only go down about as far as this. You know, from the center to the top. The bottom end player will be from the center to the bottom. Top end players will control the pitch from the center to the top. Notable players of that are numerous. This is generally along a more contemporary line and more popular line play today, especially for speed play. But for those of you who are more bottom ended, you're going to have a whole bunch of different other benefits that help you play certain pieces and produce certain, certain sounds. Sounds that aren't found in the top end sound. Whereas the top end sound will give you a certain set of accuracies and sounds that the bottom end doesn't have. So what are these accuracies and such? What is the benefit of the bottom end playing? Bottom end playing, as far as I'm concerned, allows you to press more naturally downward and putting a lot less stress on your elbow and wrist. So if you're playing, find is that slides tend to be a little more empty sounding rather than the top end slides which kind of go whoop into that sound that way from the center downwards but arguably this is all one most cases I find when teaching is that if people try to push in this way you're losing your grip if you try to push from the bottom up you also lose a lot of the ability to get that kick sound. That sound. Boom. That sort of sound. But what does the bottom end players usually have more control of and whatnot? Well, unless you have a specific finger technique on the back of the drum, sort of like uh, Johnny McDonough. That sort of thing. What you get are a lot of choked sounds, but you also have to put a lot more effort into squeezing down a sliding edge of your hand. So if you're using the inside of your hand, like I use a lot for up here, you have to actually push a heck of a lot harder to get higher pops, or you have to push down quite a bit and push a lot of motion on the inside of the bottom of the drum. So. What it doesn't allow for is very accurate slide playing, whereas the bottom end provides a little bit more uh, benefit for a lot of this sort of sound. Hits that are usually done sort of a coughing sound. The top end can also do it, but you have more hand area with more little bits that you can manipulate and apply pressure than you can with the top end, whereas you're doing this sort of thing. If you play top end and play this way, you lose a lot of your accuracy, but you gain a lot more control in the bottom end. The benefit of the bottom end is that you're able to control a lot of the mid-tones and the bass. If you are someone who likes to use finger techniques, you're lucky in that sort of magic triangle that exists, that quarter of the drum skin. You can affect the tones, interestingly, by placing your hand low and then placing your fingertips out from that. And 
and you're able to get a more cohesive sound. Up here, you still get the same number of sounds, you just don't get as much depth to them. And it's not just due to the tipper type, it's mainly due to how your hand sits on the skin. It's a lot of stress to turn your arm this way and press it against something to get those sounds. Whereas down here, you already have the majority of your hand already sitting where it should. Top, uh, sorry, bottom end is far more useful for that style of playing for a good reason. It applies less pressure on the joints and the arms. Your muscles are doing less work. And you can smoothly, free, freely move around with a lot less energy and more accuracy. I really like it for trad playing, especially when you're playing like a mallet end tipper and you need to get some slidey sounds. And I'm clapping out the mid-range chokes down here rather than up here. The benefit is the natural smoothness and lack of any sort of tiredness in the arm. I often find playing a top end method in this, in this way means that you're pressing and holding much tighter, which means you're putting a lot of pressure here, you're pinching a lot of the muscle and the blood flow there, and anyone who's play the drum with a more sharper edge, you end up with lines all over your arm. So it's an excellent method. Bottom end players swell with confidence with regards to having smooth, fluid-like control, but with far less physical effort. So if you're starting off playing, I actually would recommend using the bottom end methods because it requires less effort for you to hold, it requires less energy for you to achieve, and allows you more control from this end because your brain's not having to work about or thinking about how much it hurts or how much it's uncomfortable playing. Though arguably a lot of those uncomfort issues can be resolved by having a drum that fits your body better. What does the top end have? The top end players with their wacky pops and slides and whatnot. There's not much for the slide, though a lot of top end players still have this. It's the one thing that they share. You don't have a lot of Whereas down here, you happen to have a little bit more freedom to go after those coughing, intermixed sounds and chokes. But what does the top end have? The top end, well, it doesn't have that set of looseness. It allows you, with smaller adjustments and with a smaller surface area, to create, and this is mainly because of the angle of which you're swinging at. So unless you're playing a much different method of playing, you know, Generally speaking, the sharpest of hits only come in the top end. And generally speaking, for me in top end playing, I find this is easier to move in concert together than this. Well, you can move them. That was a nice little slidiness. You get the same sort of slide, but it's a little bit sharper. It's sharper because of this. When you press in, it's a sharper edge to your hand that allows you to not push down, which you end up spreading pressure over a much wider area, and you're doing it less efficiently unless you have a very big span, like this. You can control more for pressure in and adding stability to your hold by going this way.
What does this do? It allows you to play quickly, smoothly, and accurately by picking your sections without feeling that you're letting go of the drum. So in a typical sort of playing, I won't call it a stance, but a posture, you're only really moving about this far rather than down here. Down here now, there's more flap and movement. Up here, there's very little movement by comparison. There's more arm pressure, though. So you are exer exerting yourself a little more. What does this do? This allows you to have not only the control of this, but it allows you to have a little more physical control. And that's just because it's easier to roll your wrist in than it is to roll your wrist under and press. This is really, really painful after a while. This is much more simple and easy. And that is to not only control the choke, the pitch, but you can also also control it and be able to achieve pops and things like that with the ability to continuously press inward and upward because now this whole L shape is acting like a vice and this vice squeezes not just from one side but from two sides so that allows you to make little snap hits what I mean by that is that if you're pressing constantly from this side you're also allowing yourself the bicep and the shoulder to apply pressure to the opposite side. If I'm playing here, I have pressure being exerted here from the arm, from the bicep, or instead from here, from the forearm and the wrist. This allows, versus down here where it's mainly from the forearm, whereas up here it's the forearm and the shoulder and the bicep, pinching it out. That allows you to create not just or that, but that. You can't get those down here. There's no way to reproduce that, you know, that, that, that symmetry up here cannot be reproduced down here. And unfortunately, it's just because of how things are connected. Unless you grew an arm out of your, out of your hip, you could do it that way. And if you could rotate this hand completely around with no, without a bias in the wrist, you would be able to equally distribute those sounds in any direction on the drum. Unfortunately, that's not necessarily true. So there is a lesson to be learned in learning both. The benefits of top end playing are those short, crisper sounds, generally speaking. That sort of thing, whereas the lower, low end playing, well, I really should call it, oh, the bottom end players, the benefit of bottom end players is the smoothness and slideability of the two, of that style, which allows it to hit a lot of the low and mid range. Think of the top end players being sort of better generally at the mid to high range of sounds and frequencies, and the low range and frequencies in the mids are sort of exploited better by the bottom end players. becomes apparent when you start using things like bundle tippers, that delicateness that happens. delicate sound. Whereas up here, you have way more access to it. But what you lose is a little bit of that resonance that can happen at the low end. And 
the benefit of the low end allowing the mid-range to elasticate, if that's even a word, to bounce back and forth here and here, rather than here and here. You know, one of the biggest problems in not being as elastic in the low end and, and the top end players is that you have to literally remove everything and you have to hit below. Whereas here, the low end plane, you're already there. That sort of thing. But the high end players, the top end players, have the subtlety of sounds. And if you're if you're mic'd up, that subtlety. You can also see what you're doing better too. So there's some benefits to top end versus bottom end. So again, really, really quickly, the benefit of bottom end playing is that in most session music and in, in most trad music, this is generally, I find, going to be more useful, mainly because those are the sounds you would normally hear coming out of, but also because it's a lot more of a relaxed Playing. There's not much tightness to it, and it allows you some freedom because you're sitting already in the center on the bass, without leaving the head off the drum. The downside is that it creates more flop. The downside is that it loses some sharpness of sound no matter how pointy your tipper is. Another problem is that it does not allow as much contouring of the hand to allow for that effect down here in the same way. You can do it if you like to bruise your ribs. So the benefit of the top end playing is that you get more minute, accurate, regular playing. And you can see what you're doing better, so you can see how you're striking. But you lose out a lot with regards to slide play. You can slide it up, but it doesn't quite have that same effect. You lose a lot of the bass in that sound, but you gain a lot of the, up, the mid and the upper range. Because this is such an easier motion the choke and the in and out. Control those two axes better. And you're way more stable doing it. And you have very little flap in the drum. So hopefully this helps out. Um, I probably won't put out another one until the new year once I get some stuff written up and my schedule opens up. But it is nice to produce something at least uh, around the Christmas time and before the New Year. So for those of you still on holiday, have a great holiday. Have fun. You know, be wary of yourself, and you know, take some of this advice in regards to also help prevent a lot of pain in your arm, especially if you're a shorter person or if you're someone who has blood flow issue in the arm when you're gripping. You may want to watch this video once or twice, maybe three times. That would be nice. Maybe even hit the like button and subscribe. That would be also nice. Um, but to help you play better, longer, and with a greater degree of proficiency. But honestly, learn both. They're great. Okay, have a good one.